Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word, where we reflect on the gospel for the coming Sunday. A professor at Princeton University once had a student approach him to question him on that day's lecture on the moral law. Last semester, the student protested, we learned that there's no such thing as a universal moral law, that every society makes up its own standard of right and wrong, its own fair and unfair, and each one makes up something different. The professor breathed a sigh while shuffling through the large stack of papers on his desk. And finding one paper in particular, he looked up at the student and said, It's a relief to hear you say that. Because you see, I'm very lazy, and I hate grading papers. But you've just saved me a great deal of work. I can now safely give you an F without reading your paper at all. And getting angry, the student protested, But that's not fair. You can't do that. And smiling, the professor responded, but I can, because you see, we just have different standards of right and wrong, of fair and unfair. Moral relativism is the denial of any standard of an objective moral truth, something that's universally true for all of us. And as this example demonstrates, it all sounds well and good until it's applied to me. In Sunday's gospel, Jesus enters the synagogue in Capernaum on the Sabbath. A synagogue was a local place of worship where Jews gathered on the Sabbath to hear the scriptures proclaimed. And as a rule, no less than seven men would be called upon to read portions of the law and the prophets. It was then customary for a distinguished teacher to speak, usually a rabbi or a scribe. And their, their teachings, their sermons, relied upon prior rabbinical traditions and interpretations. Their teachings were based on the authority of others what we might call name-dropping. And so a skilled scribe would be able to restate what other rabbis had previously taught. Rabbi Hillel says this, or Rabbi Shammai says this, or, but Rabbi so-and-so says this. So basically they were just quoting the opinions of other teachers. But something very different happens in Sunday's Gospel. Mark says that when Jesus taught, the people were amazed. The Greek word used here, means much more than amazement. It's pasonto, and it means to be panicked or struck by a blow. Jesus literally knocks the wind out of them. And notice what causes this, his teaching. Remember, the scribes are experts in the law. They're well-read. They know the arguments, but their authority is always based on the words of other men. When Jesus speaks, he doesn't quote anyone. He doesn't refer to the teaching of other rabbis. He speaks on his own authority. He says, this is exactly what this means. And the crowds were stunned by this. They'd never heard anyone speak this way before, with such certainty and with such authority. And now, as if to confirm the authority of his words, he's going to act with authority. Mark says that among those gathered in their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. There's a demon in the synagogue, in the very place of worship. But how did he get in? Because certainly a manic, wild-eyed man frothing at the mouth and screaming obscenities would have been restrained from entering a place of worship. This man obviously had periods of lucidity and calm. And so here's this man sitting in the synagogue, listening along with everyone else. No physical or emotional abnormalities until he hears Jesus teaching with authority. And then he goes nuts. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Notice the demon's tactic here. We're at the beginning of Mark's gospel, and the demon is the first one to address him as Jesus of Nazareth. But it's more than an address. It's an accusation. This one is from Nazareth. It was a common saying, nothing good comes from Nazareth. Even more so, it was a denial. This one is from Nazareth. But we know that the Messiah, when he comes, will come from the city of David, Bethlehem. But the demon has no authority over the truth. It pains him, and he screams, have you come to destroy us? The presence of the truth is a torment to the demon. So much so that he's compelled in his inmost being to acknowledge the truth. We know who you are. 
the Holy One of God. In the presence of truth, the father of lies is powerless. He's cast out. And the people are amazed. They say, what is this? A new teaching with authority. And again, the original Greek stronger. It's not simply a new teaching, but an unheard of teaching. The catechism teaches us that man tends by his nature toward the truth. We're made by truth in the image of truth. And we hunger for the truth. So it must have been so frustrating and difficult to discern the truth from among the scribes varying interpretations and name droppings. But Jesus spoke simply and with authority. It was a breath of fresh air. The hearts of the people must have been hungering for this. As members of the church of Christ's body, we too have a serious duty to speak the truth and to bear witness to the beauty of that truth in our daily lives. And this is very important in our time. The evangelization of culture, Pope Benedict XVI once said, is all the more important in our time when a dictatorship of relativism threatens to obscure the unchanging truth about man's nature, his destiny, and his ultimate good. There are some who now seek to exclude religious belief from public discourse, to privatize it or even to paint it as a threat to equality and liberty. How prophetic were those words? How bad is it out there? A security camera in Britain recorded two young boys calmly leading a toddler away and bludgeoning him to death. A mother in South Carolina fastened her own two children to their safety belts and then sank the car in the river so she could restore a romantic interest with a man who didn't want children. The leader of a national animal rights organization stated that animals are the moral equivalent of humans. An upper-middle-class college couple in New Jersey delivered a child in a motel room, bashed in its head, and then dropped him in a dumpster. The American College of Emergency Physicians estimated that 70,000 elderly Americans are abandoned by family members every year, a practice now called granny dumping. And the list goes on and on. And these events, are, they're not out of the ordinary. They can be seen almost daily in our living rooms on the evening news. This is what happens when you jettison the truth. Our society is raising a generation of young people who deny that there's any objective standard of truth. It's about what feels good. But if there's no truth, there's also no meaning. Maybe that's why suicide is the third leading cause of death among our young people today. An existence without meaning leads to despair. So as followers of Christ, we have a great responsibility we have to be willing to walk into the synagogues of our day. Right? Whether it be our classrooms, our boardrooms, the town halls, the city squares. And we have to speak the truth with love. But we have to speak the truth. And we shouldn't be surprised at the reception we receive. There will be hearts that hearken to the truth, that are hungry for more. Just as in the time of Jesus Christ. But just as surely, there will be those who cannot stand to hear the truth, who gnash their teeth. So don't be surprised if we're met with outrage and hostility. A few years ago, after giving a talk about the dangers of moral relativism to our youth group, an intelligent young man challenged me with a scientific rebuttal. He said, how can you say anything is absolute when one of the foundations of science is Einstein's theory of relativity, that everything is ultimately relative? I didn't know how to answer him at the time. So I ran home and I read about Einstein's theory of relativity. And as it turns out, his theory of relativity is based on one constant, the speed of light. Light is the one constant that has to remain absolute for the theory to hold. And that same light still shines in the darkness. I'm Father Joseph Mary, and thanks for listening to A Simple Word. If you found this reflection helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.